Why, hello, younglings, and welcome to another installment of Cisco's private collection. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you enjoy watching our content, show us some love by liking the video and ring the bell to make sure you get notified whenever we drop new content. We appreciate you all. So you're probably wondering, where is Cisco? He's currently in therapy for reasons I will not disclose, but he's been featuring some of his Mayo builds recently and I know he loves Mayo. So I have a surprise for you and for him. I have a Mayo build of my own. But mine has a hint of habanero. Maybe even ghost pepper. Let's take a look. Bruh, your build is the furthest thing from mayo in like the worst possible spicy way. Spicy mayo. It is the opposite of spicy. It's bitter. So today we're gonna be looking at my custom outdoor M4 that Cisco actually gracefully built internally for me. He didn't help me with the externals, so he might disapprove of that but he was able to help me out with a very clean and functioning build um, so that I could actually compete and reach my targets outdoors. Now we all know how much of a fanboy Cisco is about VFC bodies. So he decided to put one of those together for me and he really appreciates how strong, sleek, slender, supple, smooth, and reliable VFC bodies are. And internally, he's not a shallow man, so he appreciates what's on the inside as well. So for my handguard, I decided to go with the PTS ZevTech 9.5 inch handguard. And I went with this one because I actually really like the look of real steel ZevTech rifles. And this is kind of what my whole build was inspired by. Moving on to the grip, I went with the PTS ergonomic grip, just because it is ergonomic, it feels great. Uh, and then lastly for my stock, I went with the Strike Industries Viper stock just because of how modern it looks and sleek and it is comfortable and easily adjustable. So for my front end, I do have a PTS Battle Comp just because I like the aggressive look it has and it does fit that outdoor theme that I'm trying to go for. I also have some NC Star uh, M-Lock rail covers that have a golf ball texturing. Uh, I really like the feel of them. It allows me to get a very nice solid grip. Allows me to firmly grasp it. And I also have a, a scout light on the right side because outdoors is it's dark sometimes, man. It's sometimes you gotta, you know, battle the sun. And this this flashlight, it doesn't compete with the sun, but it's cool. It looks cool. And that's the, the the main point. On top, I also have the pressure switch that is mounted by some. What are these called again? Zip ties. Zip ties. And I also uh, black electrical tape the wiring because I see some real steel shooters do that and I thought it looked cool. Do you think it looks cool? I think it looks cool. It looks cool. And then finally, I have the PTS flip up sights on the rear and on the front. Now for my optic, I went with an Atlas Custom Works T1 slash T2 sight riser. And for my actual optic, I am running a Lancer Tactical T1, um, just because this whole combo is very affordable, but it still has that very expensive look. Uh, and I really like the hollowed out riser. It, it looks very aggressive and modern, like I've been saying. And uh, again, fits the overall look of the gun that I'm going for. Now I did mention in the beginning that my Mayo build did have a little spicy kick to it. A little, a little horseradish zing, a little, little ghost pepper tickle. Well, here it is. This is it. This is why Cisco does not consider this a fully virgin mayo build. All right, this drop stock. Now, although I was trying to go for a very mayo build, I do value ergonomics over everything. And when I play outdoors, I am wearing a dye mask. So I do need that extra level of clearance so I can actually use my sight. And to help me out with that, I went with the Tap Airsoft Drop Stock Adapter. Uh, and this helps me out a ton. I've mentioned it all the time whenever I talk about my loadouts or my other guns. Um, most of all, my M4s have a drop stock style. And this one actually looks very clean. Uh, it doesn't look too loud or, or too DIY. And it is an upgrade that I highly, highly recommend if you're wearing some sort of full face mask. Uh, and it lets you get a very comfortable sight picture with your optic. And yes, it looks weird, but ergonomics, get with it. 
And finally, for my external build, I did add that little, this is, this is the red food coloring that I put on my mayo. Just, just a little, you know, make it look a little bit extra spicy. The Lonex 200 round mid cap magazine. Now we did do a video on this, so if you missed it, go ahead and check out the link over here, over there. I don't know wherever it is. But I was gonna take care of it. But check that out. I love these mags. When I was playing outdoors, I was able to feed um, 0.32s through these, and I had no feeding issues at all whatsoever. Uh, fed great, and since it did have that 200 round capacity, I was able to hold much more without holding much more mags. Um, so I was able to keep up that firepower without weighing myself down with a ton of mags. So highly recommend and they look really nice. Now since Cisco decided to give me the princess treatment on my internals, that means I don't know what's inside of here, but that's okay because he gave me a list of all the parts. So if you wanted to recreate this build, you can. So let's go ahead and start off with the inner barrel. I am running the Mad Bulls 6.03 R-Hopped inner barrel with a flat hop bucking. I also have the Lancer Tactical 1601 high speed gears, as well as a short stroke piston, the Lonex cylinder, cylinder head, air nozzle, and wrapper plate, the Echo One SP120 spring, as well as the Jefftron Leviathan MOSFET, and finally the Classic Army high torque motor. So I did mention that he decided to put inside a Jefftron Leviathan MOSFET and it did come with this very nice sleek trigger but I really like this MOSFET because it allows you to connect to the uh, Leviathan app which allows you to uh, control various things like uh, what your trigger pull does, um, what it does on semi, what it does on auto, you can do full burst, three round burst, uh, you can control how many are in those bursts. Um, you can control rate of fire, active braking, pre-cocking, delay between shots, anything really. So I started this build in 2019 and I fielded it for the first time in 2020 and I probably won't field it again until 2021 or 2022 because California cannot handle the big sick. So a lot of fields are closing again, but I guess that's fine because I spend most of my time playing Warzone anyways. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Cisco's private collection. Now, if you liked our videos, please share to like. This is Kevin from Airsoft GI, and thank you for tuning in to Cisco's private. Say, say collection, collection, say collection. Thank you.